I'm so excited because we have a project set up for pretty much each month through the spring of just things we needed to get done around the house. And soon we'll be branching into the outdoor section of our projects, meaning the garden. This is going to be our garden location. The house is behind me here, there's a duck house. I lined it out using rocks and things I found around the property and some cardboard that we had just so that way we'd know kind of what to visualize. The garden is gonna be about 42-ish feet long by 50 feet. Our goal this spring is to get it fenced in. We're gonna put some stairs in there and we wanna make all of this into usable space. In order for me to make sense of this, I thought that it would be helpful for me to put it all on a spreadsheet because I've never planned out a garden of this size before. I wanted to walk you through what that process looked like and what I've come up with. Although, subject to change. Everything is subject to change. Welcome to the office. Question one, what plant hardiness zone are you in? You can easily find this. Look it up in the Farmer's Almanac online. We are in hardiness zone 8B. Now, the scale goes from one to 13, with 13 being the warmest. Each of these zones is separated by an average temperature difference of about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So what this tells me in zone 8B is some information about what plants might thrive in that particular climate, what plants might need a little extra support there, and my tentative first and last frost dates. You want to ask yourself how much space you have and what that space looks like. How much space do you have and what is that space like? So we have a space that's 42 by 50 feet, roughly and we need to go ahead and do a bunch of work to it, but I wanna consider what we have there first. So I'm thinking about the cardinal directions, how much sunlight this area is going to be getting at certain times of the day, certain times of the year, even thinking about the rain that comes to the space or the lack thereof in a few months. And then you wanna think about your personal goals for gardening. So what do you wanna produce? Is this like a tea garden? Is this a garden for natural dyes? Is this a garden for skincare? A garden for vegetables? I don't know, there's so many gardens, there's like moon gardens that are like they only open at night so decide what you want to grow what kind of produce what you want to do with it how much of it you'll need when you know your purpose it helps to make everything a little more clear so my purpose for this garden is to produce vegetables and some fruit for mike and i through the summer during the production months of our garden maybe even into early fall i would like to provide most if not all of the vegetables some of the fruit that we'll be eating it would be great to have a little bit extra to give away. It doesn't really matter how much I put in, how much I don't put in, but I am going to pay special attention to the production per plant. I'm going to look and see how much of certain vegetables or fruit that Mike and I consume and how much is the output of those plants that produce those vegetables. The last question I put on here, although it is not the last question you'll ask yourself, there's plenty more, I'm still questioning myself right now, is what do you need to make your space functional for you? So think about kind of the gap between what your purpose is and what your goal or aim is to get out of that garden space and how you've described that space. So we're going to be adding some compost to our soil to start it off. We have a lot of grass to turn over. We're still deciding if we're going to put down actual pathways throughout our garden. There will be spaces to walk, but we don't really know what we want to cover those spaces with. We're debating maybe gravel just because it happens to be something that we can source locally and super easy right down on the block. So keep that in mind when you think about these changes you're making. How are you going to make them? We also need to put in some really tall fencing to keep out the deer and all the other pests that are nearby. Fencing that goes high, then are mesh towards the bottom of the garden, and it needs to go a little bit into the ground because we've got some rodents around. We'll also need to set up a drip irrigation system, probably from our second well, which was up and running a month ago, now not so much. So stay tuned to see if we figure that out in another video. Now that I've asked myself all these questions, I had to go ahead and think about the organization of this space. So these are the factors that I've considered. There's plenty more, but these are the ones that were on my mind. Sunlight, water, when and how to plant. So if you're gonna be directly seeding into the ground, if you're gonna be transplanting something, and if you're doing a transplant, are you germinating those seeds indoors? Are you planting starters that you've purchased somewhere? Things like that. And also, of course, when to harvest and when to remove those plants from your garden. You wanna consider if you have annuals, perennials, biennials, when these things are gonna be producing. Is it a warm or a cool season crop? This is something that has just been eye-opening to me. We moved from Michigan where there are all kinds of changes in the temperature throughout the year. Here it seems much more steady, but it still makes a difference. Consider, like I said, production per plant, the spacing per plant, and if they will spread. I've got quite a few vining plants in my plans, 
and I think I'll probably have to adjust along the way. I don't think that I'm really taking into account the amount of space they're going to need, but I'm trying my best and thinking about things like mint, which can be super invasive in a garden, and considering planting those in a container so that I can control some of the spread that I can, and I'm just going to learn by trial and error for the rest. Also, I really enjoyed learning about companion plants, and I guess as a result by about incompatible plants. Certain plant groups, families, or even just specific plants either can help or hinder each other's growth when they're in close proximity to one another. This is for a multitude of reasons, either because some of these plants produce chemicals that either support or do not support certain other types of plants, and some of them also are really heavy nutrient suckers. So. If you plant some of these right next to each other, they're all going to be trying to get similar nutrients at a similar massive amount from that same area of soil. So keeping that in mind as you plan to space them out. And here's what I got. I cannot wait. My last garden was a container garden because we were renting the property where we're at. Comment down below if you can think of anything else that I should grow, or if you're like, Olivia, you didn't think this through, there's something there that needs to be changed, please let me know. Although, hey, nothing wrong with good old trial and error. So, like, subscribe, and we'll see how this goes. We'll see how it grows. <sighs> so bad.